You're listening to The Bible Guys, a podcast where a couple of friends talk about the Bible in fun and practical ways. Hey, everybody. If this is your very first time tuning in, we are The Bible Guys. I'm Chris, and this is Jeff. Oh. Yes. Wow. I'm just welcoming new people. What a wonderful thing. What are the chances that... Just stumbled that's, across The Bible Guys. What, what are the chances that somebody's tuning into this episode for the very first time? Yeah. Well, they're probably wondering, who names themselves the Bible guys? Well, people who <laughs> are guys <laughs> yeah. who talk about the Bible. In fun and practical ways. Yes. Just a couple friends. Just a couple friends. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, that's a bit much right there. <laughs> a bit much, a couple of friends. We it's never presumptuous. Told, by the way, we never told them to say that. Did, did, I, I don't think I, so. I wonder if anybody knows that. I, I think I said a couple of guys uh-huh. who... Yeah. who like to talk about the Bible in fun and practical ways, but they said a couple of friends. Yeah, presumptuous. Yeah. Hey, so um, this segment that Desiree is having a start we off better, with, We better become friends at some point here. Yes, well, you know, I guess it's, so. It's over 500 episodes. I guess so. Yeah. Hey, yeah. remember when we were celebrating the 500th episode, which was 24 episodes ago, and you said, I'm not sure I want to do 500 anything with you. <laughs> and then I start laughing, and you go, no, what I meant to say was... <laughs> And I was like, no, that's, not, that's what you meant to say. You're trying to backpedal. You're trying to make a terrible joke. Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. No, I really, I really do enjoy doing this with you. I enjoy I doing do it with you, too. Fun. Yes, I do, too. Mm-hmm. All right, so Desiree has us doing a segment called Would You Rather? And so it is just a question of which one would you rather do? Okay, these are fun. I yeah. haven't looked at this yet. I, I haven't either, but I like these. I like this concept in this game. Okay. Number one. Would you rather always be able to find a parking spot right away? Ooh. Yes, please. Or never have to wait in line at a store? Ooh. Ooh, both of those are really good. So if you choose one, you never get the other one? Is that what's happening that here? That seems to be the, you can only is have that, one. Yeah. So, but you're not going to be cursed. So this is similar space. to the one we did, one must go. This time we're choosing one. Yeah, but but yeah, yeah. think about it. If you choose the line, that means lines are magical, but your parking space, parking spot experience is still the same. Yes. It's not like you're cursed with parking spots that are bad. Yeah, man, I don't know. That's a hard one. Uh, I think I would choose the parking spots. I want the parking spot. Not, I, the line. I, not me. I would choose the line any day. And let me tell you why. Because I don't ever really recall. That's true. That's true. I don't I, really recall going, oh, my goodness, this parking spot situation is really driving me nuts. And I have to walk across the whole parking lot. Like, I, I, I don't mind. Yeah, back when malls were a thing. And you had to park three miles from the food court. Yes. That was tough. But, yeah, that was tough. Yeah. But anyway, but I do recall being in line thinking, yeah. this is ridiculous. Well, I drive a, a full-size pickup truck. You do, too, a lot of times. Mm-hmm. I find myself just parking at the end anyways and walk it in because it's too hard to cram that truck into the little parking spot. Right, right. That's true. So that's true. Can I change my, can I change my, you my can. decision? Okay. You can. You can. I'd like to revoke it and to instead choose to never have to wait in line. Way. Yeah, that's to sway right. my way. You won me over. Okay, good. Uh, you want to take number two? Would you rather be able to speak and understand every language, but never be able to travel or travel anywhere, but only speak your native language? Oh, easy peasy. Yeah, that's that's the travel anywhere, travel but anywhere only speak, and speak my own language. That's what it is yeah. for me now. Yes, that's, that's exactly right. <laughs> that's the life I'm living today. Right. Yeah, we're, right. we're Americans, right? Isn't that, you've heard that, right? My So my daughter's boyfriend is uh uh from mexico and he said he told me he said do you know what you call a person who says who can speak two languages i said what he said bilingual he said you know what you can call a person who who speaks three languages i said trilingual he said you know what you call a person who speaks one language i said no he says american that's hilarious <laughs> That's really funny. Isn't that funny? Yeah, it's true. It's probably true. It's true, it? man. Everybody else speaks so many languages. I was just in a meeting here recently. A guy speaks eight languages. Yeah, that's eight crazy. Eight languages from Africa. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but anyway, uh, you can surround yourself with translators, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what uh, I have to do. And think about the other option. Uh, you, you understand every language but never be able to travel. That's a curse. That means you have a bunch of knowledge that you cannot use. That's correct. Unless you just happen to run into People somebody. are bringing them to you. Yeah, in, in the grocery store. You're you like, work at the UN. Yeah. You speak all the languages. You're like, may I interject in this conversation just because I understand you? Yes. That's terrible. Hola. So, right. Did you say hola? Yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, little bit uh, yeah, more in go. depth than that. Number three, would you rather be at the world's best... Nope. Let me start again. Would you rather be at the world's best? Not at. at would you rather be the world's best? That's the reason why I'm screwing this up. 
Would you rather be the world's best at a completely useless, useless hobby, like competitive paperclip bending, <laughs> or mediocre at a hobby that everyone is obsessed with? Okay, first of all, competitive paperclip bending. What? Yeah. Can't, under, we can't un- overlook that. Underwater basket weaving? Cool. Okay. Like, what the So you heck? can be the world's best at something that's completely useless, or mediocre at something everybody's obsessed with. Oh, I'd rather be mediocre at something everybody's obsessed with, because that's the truth now, and I enjoy it. What is it? Everything. What are you mediocre at that everybody else is obsessed well, with? For instance, like fantasy football. That's a hobby. Um, I'm, I'm medi- and you're mediocre at I'm that. I'm mediocre at it. Well, you got pretty, you were pretty good last year. Yeah, I was good last year. Pretty good. So, um, pretty good. But pretty everybody's, good. Everybody's you, you, you almost won. I did almost win. You almost win. won the league last yeah, year. Yeah, and you won. Yes. <laughs> That's where we're going with this, everybody. <laughs> you brought it up. I just felt like people should know the truth. I led the <clears throat> entire season. The whole season. And then, you dominated. You dominated the whole season. The last season. two games, uh, I had five of my players get injured. Stumbled. Five. Yeah. That's how it happens in football. Yeah. Okay, so you'd rather be mediocre at a hobby that everybody is obsessed with. Yes, why be great at Quite competitive honestly, paperclip I really bending? would be the other way. Really? Yeah. You'd rather do a party trick that nobody cares about? Yeah. You're like, look at me I don't know it's a party trick, clips. but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, be great at something. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But I think that's the difference between you and me. So you got that whole woo thing. You want to be out in the middle of the crowd and doing what everybody else is doing. Right. I don't care what everybody else is doing. I'd rather just really be great at something I like. Mm-hmm. Because, see, my hobby would be sick. So I love it. It doesn't matter if the world hates it. So I'd rather be great at the thing I love than be always frustrated and be in the middle of the pack with everybody else. And see, I would hate being fantastic at something that nobody cares about. Yeah. Well, I care about it. It's my hobby. It doesn't matter what other people think. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I think hey. that's the difference between, between us. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. You're probably right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, would you rather have a magical closet that instantly provides any outfit but only in neon colors Ugh. or a road ro- wardrobe that only ever contains pajamas but in all styles and fabrics? <laughs> okay, what a silly question. What a silly question. A magical closet that provides any outfit but only in neon colors. What kind of stipulation is that? Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, obviously, the pajamas. Really? I was exactly the opposite. Like, I would not want to live in pajamas. Well, it doesn't say you have to live in them. It just says, which would you rather have? Well, what else are you going to wear? Do you wear pajamas? If you have a wardrobe. So let me back up from this question. Do you have... I'm not a pajama guy. Okay, that's the difference. Yeah. I wear pajamas every day. Every day. Every in the day. middle of the day. Uh, sometimes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, mm-hmm. there are times where I'll come home, and if I'm wearing, like, like uncomfortable, like a, like a dress shirt or something... Uh, I'll, I'll come home and immediately I'll run upstairs, come back down. If I know I'm going to be in for the rest of the day, mm-hmm. I'll be pajama bottoms and a t-shirt. Wow. Yeah. With yeah. slippers. That's fantastic. And sometimes if it's cold, a robe. Yeah. I'm taking it to mean that these are the only things you can wear because but that's not what it says. That's Jeff. your wardrobe. Why are you imposing things? Don't add okay, a jot. So you're, you're saying Don't that add a jot just because a it's a magical closet, you could have like a chest of drawers somewhere that had the rest yes. of your clothes in it. Okay. It's saying, well, I see it's that. saying it's all saying, right. Then I would also ha- choose the pajamas then. Yeah. Would you okay. rather have this thing or this thing? Yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you know, it'll help you. Well, that was riveting. But only if you like riveting. Neon. Yes. Well, today we're launching into uh the book of Psalm Psalms. And it's uh actually isn't isn't it the last Psalm? This is the end of the book of Psalms. Yeah. There are one hundred and fifty Psalms. Yeah. And we're gonna read Psalm. 150. 150. Yeah. It's not very long, oh, but I love how it verses. ends. Mm-hmm. It says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequaled greatness. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with the, the lyre and the harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath Sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, it's okay. let everything that breathes. Yeah. So what, what do you think of when you hear that last verse? Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. That every, everybody should be praising. Let everything that has breath. Oh, yeah. I hate that. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Ugh. You don't like that song? I hate that part. Well, I like the song. I just don't like that part. Oh, the yeah, part yeah, in the beginning. Yeah. It's just weird. Yeah. 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 Well. <laughs> You know, it's different, but um, weird. different, weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
so, anyways. Anyway, but yes, that that song, if you're familiar with it, I shouldn't uh, be judgmental about it though. Somebody's praising the Lord. What's that? When they're shouting that. Uh, I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm oh, not. My but, my wife is. That's okay. My wife is. You should yeah. see her during that beginning. Yeah. She loves it. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, and she's going to say, well, thanks, Jeff. I'm never going to sing that first part around I you said, again. No, no. Go ahead. She thinks Probably she, not, actually. Hey, hey, hey Jeff. Because uh, I tell hey, the worship hey, leaders Liz, what I want them to do. Liz, Liz, uh, Jeff thinks you're weird. I didn't say Je- Liz is weird. Oh, that's what you <laughs> The said. writers were weird. It sounded kind of what it sounded yeah. like. No, no, it's okay. It's good. It's fine. Everybody, so, Everybody should praise the Lord. So there's a pattern here. The first pattern is, is he says, praise God in his sanctuary. Mm-hmm. Praise God in his mighty heaven, right? So uh, it's it's a great encouragement uh, to know that what David is saying is he's saying when you're in the house of God, there should be praise. Right. And he's talking about instruments and not only not only in all kinds of instruments of that day, but he's also saying loud instruments, which uh, which justifies our decibel usage on Sunday mornings. Yeah. Yeah, right. Well, so there's so many times throughout the book of Psalms that says, shout unto the Lord. Yes. Um, shout to the yeah, Lord. Yeah. Uh, the what does he say? Shout unto God with a voice of triumph, yep. right? Uh, it says, says, play skillfully with a loud noise. Yep. Uh, there's so many, so many places in the book of Psalms that talk about volume, that what he's not looking for is some kind of liturgical dirge, uh, some kind of funeral song. Right, like singing he's, sentences. Yes. Yeah. So he's he's saying, man, I want this to be a party. When when you come into my house, I want you to be celebrating. Now there are, as you read through the Book of Psalms, there are confession songs. Yep. There are struggles. Hey God, I'm struggling in my worship. I'm struggling in this moment. There are so there are. There's all kinds of emotion. But he's saying when you come into the God sanctuary, mm-hmm. uh, you should come in and have an understanding that a big part of this. Is just celebrating how good God is. Yeah. Right? And, I, and I like verse number two, particularly. It says, praise him for his mighty works and praise him for his unequaled greatness. Yeah. So that Those is, are two totally different things. Yeah, two different things. And, <laughs> and it's actually what we just preached on uh, last week, which is recognizing God for who he is and what he has done yes. in, in the past. Mm-hmm. And, and so we were actually in the book of Jonah, and we were talking about how Jonah... Uh, was never given an explanation from God about Nineveh. He tried to run from God. He gets swallowed up by a fish, and he repents in the fish's mouth, and he comes to all these great conclusions. And yet, the entire time, God never explains himself. God never goes, well, Jonah, let me explain to you why. Uh, you know, let me, let, me, let me try to teach you about my compassion or my perspective. God doesn't offer any explanation. And so what does Jonah do? God, Jonah repents based on two things. The character of God, who he is, and the greatness of God, unequal greatness of what he has done in the past. Right. Right. So, and that's a great lesson for our lives here. So this verse number two, you know, that could possibly be a verse that we can memorize. Right. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be great for us to, when, when, whenever we try to find out the why, and we're like, you know, I can't understand the why we're angry with God because God doesn't explain the why. If God would just let me know why this happened, then I could be okay with it. But chances are you're never going to know the why outside of eternity for a big conundrum like that. But if you were to be like David and just say, okay, you know, maybe quote this verse. I don't understand the why, but I'm going to praise him for his mighty works. And I'm going to praise him for his unequal greatness, for who he is and what he has done. Yeah. When you praise him for his mighty works, when, you, when, when you're celebrating what God has done, that's praise. When you're uh, uh, celebrating who he is, that's worship. worship. Yeah. Right. So you got both praise and worship in this thing. Now he's saying praise him because th- this whole passage is praise. So you can praise God when you're worshiping him, certainly, right. but right. you have to also choose to praise him just for what he's done. And so when you talk about his mighty works, uh, every once in a while, <clears throat> I just recently read an article by a pretty famous faith leader. Oh, complaining about. I, I didn't know I wrote an article. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it wasn't you. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> what? Uh, no, because I, I disagreed fundamentally with it. So he's oh, he, he's where it comes he's, okay. he's a distinguished preacher. Okay. That clearly has very limited understanding of music and worship. Oh, I got you. So was kind of taking shots at modern worship, uh, and elevating uh, what he felt like was more respectful. Hymns. Ugh, then ugh. begins to hint towards. Oh, by the way, the, my my yuck. So sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got to explain that yuck. Yeah. 
I wasn't meaning yuck on the preferences because mm-hmm. because because all preferences are good. Yeah. I mean, taking shots at one preference over the other is yuck. But there was kind of a hint that the pipe organ choir thing <laughs> or the the hymns of Luther, Martin Luther, uh, were superior to the the current worship of you know uh, 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 songs. And I, I'm 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 not saying that every single song sung by every single worship leader is valid. But he was argu- making an, uh, a stylistic argument mm-hmm. as if white European music from 500 years ago was superior to something that sounded a little bit more Latin or African. And it felt like cultural elitism more than it had anything to do with, mm. with, a, with a faith-based thing. Because here's what I know, and I've had these arguments so many times. You know, the world we grew up in had very strict rules about music, very strict rules about what was and wasn't acceptable. In the world I grew up in, we weren't allowed to have drums. We weren't allowed to have bass guitar. We weren't allowed to have cymbals. We weren't allowed to have guitars at all. We were, we were very, very, very precise. And they made all these rules, and they, they began to kind of imply that there's, uh, you know, uh, appropriate worship music and inappropriate worship music styles. And I just began to study the book of Psalms. Uh, I, I asked a professor one time, I said, did you realize <laughs> there's a, the biggest book in the Bible is a song book? And he goes, you're absolutely right. I said, so would you think that then since the largest book, 150 chapters, by far the most words, the longest chapter in the Bible is a worship song? Um, that if God decided that the largest book in the whole Bible was going to be a song book, then that would mean that worship is like super important. He goes, absolutely. And I said, great. How come he didn't include the music notes? Mm -hmm. How come he didn't include a rhythm chart? Right. He gave us the lyrics. Our attitudes should be what these are. Confession of sin. Right. Worship of how great he is. That's right. It's praising everything that he's done. That's the heart of it. But he did not give us notes. Do you know why? Because God doesn't want Jeff in 2024 uh, uh, worshiping with a style and that is culturally uh, connected to uh, and and limited to uh, a worship style that David was doing 3,000 years ago. Right, with God leers, wanted, and, leers and harps and clanging God, cymbals. God wanted me to worship him. Well, I think all those things are legit. I mean, literally, he has brass instruments. He has string instruments. He has woodwind instruments. He has percussion instruments. All the instruments we use today, he mentions in this little short book. He, so, but the difference is, can you imagine the music David listened to back then is not, I'm not currently tuning that in on my radio. Right, right. There, there's not even a radio station. Even XM, uh, Sirius XM doesn't have a station that has right. his style of music on there. Right. Right. So that's why God says over and over and over in the book of Psalms, sing a new song to the Lord. Right. He doesn't want me to rely on the stale uh, uh, b- belief system of my fathers and my grandfathers. Uh, he wants me to have the belief system, but my worship should be fresh. So I have the worship or the, the belief system that's been passed down from generation to generation. That's why he gave us the words to his worship. But the style should be something that, that, that comes from my heart and it should be a new thing. And yeah. that's why he didn't give us any notes. The guy says to me, his response was, well, you know, music notation didn't happen until the 900s AD, 1900 years after Jesus. Or after David, I said, well, that's amazing because he made sure that they could write a thing, but God couldn't make sure that they wrote notes. Right. I said, it was a miracle that he worked out letters so that they could write this book, but God couldn't have worked out some music notes. And so now you telling me that only white European music from 500 years ago is acceptable for worshiping God. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. And and then, you know, the preferences like Martin Luther kind of songs. I said, the dude wrote 5,000 songs. We sing like three. Do you know why? Because the rest just aren't that good. Right? Mm-hmm. So we're supposed to sing new songs. We're supposed to use every instrument and everything that has breath should should praise the Lord. That That's what he's saying. He's saying, dude, it needs to be in you, from you. Right. Right? About me. So you praise me for my mighty works and you recognize my unequal greatness and everything that makes noise and everything that makes breath, you should do it. Right? Yeah, that's So great. it's not about appealing to the flesh, but it is about me and my body giving it all to God in the moment. 
right? right? So what captures your attention, what's relevant to you, what 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 gets you uh, uh, in the moment worshiping, like we talked about David worshiping yesterday, what draws you in like that? So for some, the beautiful orchestral thing, my wife and I just toured in Europe uh, here recently, and pipe organs, those are incredible. This is music. If, if that's what gets you going and, and you're ready to worship when you hear that stuff, that's not a bad thing. You just can't say that's better than or superior right, to right. what, you know, this church singing a cappella with, yeah. with, a, with a tambourine in Africa. Right. Yeah. Um, I've read an article uh, that uh, talked about uh, there's no way that this instrument, this is an instrument that's used in the bars. Uh, it's only in the bars with card playing and drinking. And to bring this instrument inside the church is a disgrace. And uh, just going on and on and on about somebody, you know, just downing this instrument and saying this is the worst thing that has ever happened to the church. And uh, and then come to find out the article was written in the 1800s about the piano. The piano, yeah, yeah. yeah did you ever see that article? No. Uh-uh. Yeah. It's it's just so crazy. They used know? to preach against electric organs, too. Yeah. Right, because they were only in dance halls and uh, baseball stadiums. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> It is so crazy yeah. to me. People are just goofy. So here's what I do. I appreciate people wanting to do the right thing. Yes. But sometimes we tend to make rules where there are no rules. Yes. And if God wanted the rule, he gave us 150 chapters and chose not to give us any rhythm charts, and he didn't give us any musical notes. But he does invite us to worship him with harmony. He invites us to worship him with lyrics. He invites us to worship him with uh, melodies. He invites us to worship him individually and corporately, and he always invites us to be loud. Yeah, that's right. right. Mm-hmm. That's great. Enthusiastic. Yeah. Well, hey, that's a uh, that's that's a great uh, chapter. Great little lesson about worship. So hopefully you're a person who worships, and if you uh, don't have enough worship in your life, I would just encourage you to find there's 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 never never before in history has there been uh, more worship available to us. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you can have it on your phone. You can tune in. You can even stream in radio stations live from other cities, uh, right where right where you're sitting. So, anyway, no excuse not to worship. So, we'll see you next time on the Bible, guys.